We are at a bit of a renaissance in the biking industry, community, whatever you want to call it. We are at a place that for a long time, if you wanted to go on an overnight bike ride, multi-day trip, you needed a support vehicle or you needed a specialized touring bike with brazons, racks, panniers, all those bells and whistles. We are at a completely new place where there's all these really great smaller companies that started making things that could fit on just about any bike. That is the revolution that we've seen with bike packing. And a lot of these smaller companies making really adaptable products that you can fit on just about any bike. And instead of buying a specialized touring bike, you could buy any bike that you wanted for commuting, racing, whatever it might be, and you could put these bags on it and you could go bike touring, do a bike travel, one night, two nights, week or months. When I first started looking into this, I needed to buy a specialized touring bike and that really made the paywall to get into bikepacking really, really high. Uh, I didn't have the money. I was like 17, 18 at the time. Uh, I didn't have money for anything really. I was going to make my panniers out of a uh, couple of kitty litter buckets at the time. Now we have all these great little components and little companies and little hacks that you can make your current rig, whatever it might be, a bikepacking machine. This bag system, is something I've really wanted to experiment with for a long time, even though I do have racks and panniers and I've done longer trips like that. I wanted to get into the pros and cons, the total volume. And one of the things that people really don't talk about is like, how much volume do you actually need? So I'm gonna get into some tips about what you should be looking for when you're getting into your first bike packing setup. If you wanna know more about this particular bike right here, I already made a video about what I think are some important aspects to consider when choosing a gravel or bike packing bike. You can check that out. I'm going to link that above. In the next video in this series, I'm going to go through exactly what I keep in those bags, how I organize all of it, and the things that got me through my most recent trip on the Great Divide Mountain Biking Route. These are just a couple of videos I want to release while I work on the larger documentary series about that trip of the journey from Banff in Canada to the Mexican border in Antelope Wells. Right now I have a lot of content I'm sifting through and making a long format video about my experience on that trip. I would like to go into a di deep dive on my budget and kind of how much bike packing costs in general um, because the costs can add up quickly and I'm a huge advocate for saving money out on the trail. And I also wanna do a bit of a deep dive on my toolkit and my repair scenario that I brought with me. So if those are some things you're really interested in checking out, stick around in the channel and any of those buttons down there, if you see anything like whatever, just, just click stuff while you're here. Maybe leave a little comment. Some things that you might want to know about bikepacking in the future or the Great Divide Mountain Biking Route, you can just go ahead and click away down there. So without further ado, I'm going to hop into this bag and kind of my organization system and what I used day in and day out on the Great Divide Mountain Biking Route. This is a standard bikepacking setup. I didn't come up with this. This isn't that revolutionary, but I do love the fact that it fits on just about any bike. I'm gonna continuously reiterate that for the rest of my life. That's great. You don't need to buy a new bike to get this thing rocking. One of the things that's great about it is it's very aerodynamic and it's very streamlined. You don't have that drag of those giant panniers hanging off the side of your bike, slowing you down. Also, it's a bit narrower if you're gonna be doing some single track and it's very, very good at handling lots and lots of vibration. On the other hand, I uh, put these bags through the ringer and there's a bunch of holes in these waterproof sacks. You have to patch those things. Um, they're not as durable as maybe a set of Ortley panniers, which is kind of a bummer. And even at one point, I accidentally ripped a bunch of straps off that rear harness riding away in a storm because I went to put on another layer to warm myself up. I forgot my bag of layers on the ground like an idiot. And then the harness got stuck in my rear hub and ripped off my bike. Another real drawback is if you're very new to bike packing and you don't have a lot of money, 40 liters is kind of light on the storage space. A lot of my stuff came from the ultralight backpacking world, but if you're new to this, it's gonna be tough to fit all your stuff in there. So it's gonna take a bit of practice and it's really important that you do some shakedown rides before you get out and do anything too major or too big because it took a bit of practice for me to dial this all in and get to a place where I was very comfortable fitting everything that I needed, including a couple days worth of food into that bike. So really using this comes down to be very strategic and specific on the things that you bring. And I think that it's really important that you have some skills under your belt about how to keep yourself warm and cook lightweight food. And it's important that you try this out before you get out there on something huge. This is great for the beginner in the warmer months when you don't need that many layers. 
or if you're going to be in the Midwest where it's humid all summer and super hot, you're not going to be in and out of your bags that often. But I think a lot of people can get by with that amount of storage. This is one of my favorite parts of bikepacking. I've expressed it before. I'm going to express it again. I love little bags. I love buying fun, customizable things that I can put all over my bike. It makes me really happy. I'm going to go from the front to the back and kind of just give you a little bit of an overview of some of the bags that I have here. And the entire storage capacity of this setup is 42 liters. I wish more people would talk about that in the bikepacking world. It's really common in the backpacking world for people to talk about the size of their backpack and so on and so forth. I know for sure I can make things work out of a 42 liter backpack. So having about 40 liters of space was ideal for me. Right up here in the front, we have the Revelate Designs Harness and Salty Roll. This is 17 liters total. This is where I'd store a lot of my camping supplies, my camp clothes, tent, sleeping bag, and cooking gear, because it's not that easy to get in and out of. Although it is a double-sided stuff sack, I never wanted to open it for any reason or take it off this harness in the middle of the day. On top of that, I have the Revelate Designs Egress Pocket. That's about five or six liters. Inside of that, I would store things like snacks, chargers, my charging block, things that I needed to get to through the day, sunscreen, so on. Moving backwards from that, really sticking to the Revelate Designs theme, which seems to be like the largest brand in bikepacking at this stage, I have these feed bags by Revelate Designs. These are indispensable. I use them daily for all my little knickknacks, my lighter, my knife, things I need to grab easily, my poop kit, just in case. That little setup, I have two of them on both sides because I use them so much. I store a lot of things under my water bottles and that's where I'd keep two water bottles as well through the day. Another thing that I love in my cockpit is my quad lock. Quad lock, if you haven't heard of it, is just a phone case and mount combination. Very, very easy to use. Really, really nice. Very secure. I feel great that I can look at my maps all day and it's just easily mounted to my handlebars. Coming backward from that, we've got this restrap top tube bag. This was my toolkit. This is where I kept all of the things to repair my bike that I could easily access and reach day in, day out. That is not waterproof by any means. It leaked all the time. Further down the top tube, we have this top tube bag by Speed Goat Designs, which is a small company out of Wyoming. I picked that up along the way just so I had a little bit of extra storage for things like a water bladder that I wasn't using, um, soap so I can get the undercarriage, clean the bits, things I didn't want kicking around my snacks all day. Below that, I have this Ortlieb medium full frame roll top frame bag. That is a mouthful. This thing is by far my favorite bag in this whole bike. It's extremely durable. It did not leak. That's where I'd keep all my food. Hence why I love it so much. It left enough space here so I could still have my bottle cage accessible, which is where I kept my sauce bottles most of the time for my lunch wraps. And it's really easy to use. The roll top opens up really wide and I even accidentally broke one of these little bungees right here and Ortlieb in the middle of the trail sent me some new bungees and they sent me a little pour over thing that I think is pretty sweet. Moving into the rear of the bike, I have the Revelate Designs Terrapin bag right here. I picked that bag specifically because it's a lot thinner vertically up and down. I don't have a lot of space between my saddle and my rear tire because I'm kind of a short guy. I went with that specifically for that reason. And it was one of the thinnest ones on the market at the time that I knew about. And now I've since noticed that Rogue Panda makes one that's even thinner, has a really, really sturdy harness. And I kind of want to try that in the future. That's where I kept a lot of my layers I would need to get to throughout the day. Things that I wanted to access because that harness is a lot easier to get in and out of. And on top of that, it has all these bungee cords and things you can strap stuff to, which I really appreciated. And I would strap that Hyperlite Mountain Gear camera pod on top of it. The camera pod was great. Not for my camera, because I pretty much never put my camera in there. Uh, but for other little things throughout the day, my water filter, an extra bladder, just stuff I wanted to get to. I'd shove donuts in there a lot. 
because they would be protected and not get squished, which I really appreciated in general. So a couple of tips for somebody who is looking into buying their first bike packing setup because they got a trip in mind, some stuff they got going on, and they're really excited about getting out on a bike for an adventure. First thing I would recommend, and this seems counterintuitive to a lot of people who are new, is buy your bags last. First, get everything else in your shakedown trip ready to go. See how much volume it is total, and then buy your bags last. There's a couple of staple bags I'm sure you're going to buy regardless, which is a saddle bag, a frame bag, and a handlebar bag. Make sure you have your sleeping bag and your tent, your cooking setup, all your layers, all gathered up, ready to go. That way you know exactly how much volume you're going to need for your first trip. The next thing, you could pair this setup if you are unsure about your resupplies with a small backpack that you can wear, maybe a running vest if that's something you already have. Sea to Summit makes these very tiny backpacks that are like this big that are about 20 liters that really compress and pack down. And you could just throw into one of your feed bags up front or in that egress pocket on the top. I'm going to link that in the description below so you can check one of those out for yourself. Speaking of auxiliary storage, those ski straps, those volley straps, ski straps, whatever you call them, having a few of those around so you can strap a case of LaCroix, in my case, to the handlebars or a baguette, Subway sandwich, whatever it might be, just to have that extra storage on the outside of your bike would be really key for you as a beginner. Another important factor to consider is something that is fairly waterproof. In most case scenarios, if you're getting wet on a bike, you're getting soaked. Even if it's just raining a little bit, just from the wind, the wheels splashing everything off the ground, you're getting soaked. You need at least one place where you can keep your sleeping bag and some of your warmer layers dry if it's going to get cold and rain at all during your trip. For me, having all these waterproof bags like that frame bag has been really key to keeping myself warm out in the backcountry. And lastly, unless you can 100% comfortably afford this stuff, there's a lot of DIY solutions. You can use those ski straps, um, some other ratchet style straps, to strap to stuff sacks to your handlebars, to your seat, to your frame, whatever it might be. Check out Marketplace, get out there, look for some more affordable versions of these things. Don't skimp on the brand. Don't go full-blown Amazon brand all the way, really cheap stuff, because it's not really going to last. You might as well save your money for something worthwhile. But in the meantime, you probably have a couple of stuff sacks kicking around your house that are fully waterproof. You can strap to your bike and go on a trip. So that is the bike packing system that I use for the Great Divide mountain biking route. It was really effective for me and it fit a lot of my needs. Everybody's going to be different, like I said. Get out there, start getting together all your gear that you need to get out. Speaking of which, my next video in this series is going to be all the gear that I brought with me on the Great Divide mountain biking route last summer and what I bring on just about any trip. And I'm going to do a few caveats, things for longer expeditions, things for shorter, whatever it might be. I'm going to do a deep dive on all the things that I put in those bags. So stick around for that video. 